So I'm going to talk about CQ computation, computation, high resonance setting. This is a joint work with Alexander Brock and Professor Hamatamazi. So let me start with the notion of correlated bivariate dynamics, in short, correlations. Roughly speaking, correlations is a fundamental cryptographic resource that helps parties to compute securely over their private data. In a people assessing phase, a trusted dealer sample IRB from a joint distribution and then provides RA to Alice, RB to Bob. And in an online phase, Alice and Bob use their secret sets in an interactive protocol to securely compute the intended functionality. So note that the processing phase is independent of the functionality or the input fed to the functionality by the parties. And the secret sets are IRB are vulnerable to liquid attacks. For example, a malicious bot can get some additional information about at least secret sets. And vice versa, a malicious Alice can obtain some additional information about both secret sets, RB. And in the case of liquid happen, the correlations IRB is called liquid correlations. So a well study correlations is a random or previous transfer. But before that, let me quickly go over the notion of one out of two of reverse transfer. So an OT protocol, an interactive protocol between Alice and Bob, it takes input two bits x0, x1 from Alice and a single bit b from Bob. At the end of the, at the, end of the protocol, Bob learns xb, but nothing about the other bit. And Alice does not know the choice of bit B. So a random, a random obvious transfer is a randomized version of OT. It samples T bit X0, X1, B independently and uniformly at random. It provides secret sets X0, X1 to Alice and B, XB to Bob. And as I mentioned earlier, the secret sets IRB are vulnerable to liquid attacks. So to address this problem, Isai, Kusilevich, Ochovsky, and Sahai introduced the notion of correlation extractors in 2009. <coughs> so roughly speaking, correlation extractors take liquid correlations at input, and it produces secure independent copies of OT. More formally, a NMT epsilon correlation ejector for a correlation IRB is a two-party interactive protocol. It takes NB secret sets IRB, which it draw from the correlation. And it produces M independent secure OTs. It allows T bit of leakage on the secret sets IRB. And finally, it is secure against semi-honest adversary with the simulation error epsilon. So with that in mind, let me briefly summarize prior work and our contributions. And in this table, N is the size of the secret set. How do I draw that? Oh, okay. And M is a production rate. T is a liquid resilience. And epsilon is a simulation error. And the last, uh, the last column is the number of rounds for the correlation ejector protocol. So the first result about this is from ICOS 09. They so use N by two independent copy of ROT. And they are able to get linear impulsion rate, linear illiquid resilience, exponential high in security, and the protocols had four rounds. And note that the constant alpha, beta, and gamma are very small. And the subsequent work by Gupta, Isai, Mazi, and Sahai in 2015 use the same correlations. They improve the liquid resilience to N by four, but trade off the security. So consequently, 
So security is legible. And the protocol had two routes. Okay. They also consider a new correlations, namely the inner product correlations. In general, the inner product correlations over a vector space F to the power n is a, is a correlation in which each party gets a vector in Fn such that they are orthogonal. So using the inner product correlations, they are able to get n by 2 indicates resilience, exponential high security, two wrap protocols, but uh, one OT. So the question is that can you get the best in all four columns? In other words, can we get linear in portion rate, linear in liquid res resilience, exponential high security, and two routes protocol? So our work so that using the inner product correlations of a suitable lag field, it admits a correlation detector that has high portion rate and to the power one minus small one, resilience to n by two bit applicates, has exponential high security, and finally two routes protocol. I will go over the, the construction of our coordination detector in the next few slides. Next, let me state our results more formally. So the first main results we saw that for any constant delta in the range zero and half, there exists a correlation and there exists a two-row correlation ejector for that correlation, such that if the number of liquid bit t equal to half minus z times n, then the simulation error is exponentially small. And in fact, we choose the correlations to be the inner product correlations over a suitable lag field F, where the size of F equal to to the path delta N. So our correlation exactly is resilient to N by two bits of leakage. The question is that, does there exist a correlation detector for the inner product correlations that exist over N by two bits of leakage? More generally, can we meaningful up about the maximum liquid resilience of any correlation? And our second research answers the questions. We saw that there exists a universal constant, epsilon star, greater than zero, so that for any arbitrary field F, any n, one, n by two, epsilon correlation ejector for the inner product correlations has a simulation error epsilon at least epsilon star. Where the secret say size n equal to k times log psi of f. So basically this theorem says that for the inner product correlations with secret sets of psi n, if we link n by two bits from the secret sets, it is impossible to, e to eject even one OT. So note that this is just proof the optimality of the liquid resilience achieved by our ejector and the ZIMS 15 ejector. So next, uh, let me go over some high level construction overview of our correlation ejector. But bef before that, let me introduce an important concept that needed for the construction. Then is the of previous linear function evaluations. Instead of producing OT, our correlations produces obvious linear function evaluations. So an obvious linear function evaluations over a few F, represented as only F, it takes two few elements, A, B, from Alice, and a single few element X from Bob. And it provides Z equal to X, AX plus B to Bob. So know that the privacy requirement for, for the OLA is that Alice gains no additional advantage in predicting X. And 
Bob gains no additional advantage in predicting i. And also note that the OT is functionally equivalent to OLA over ZF2. So with that in mind, let me actually go over the constructions of our correlation attractor. So remember that our goal is that given leaky correlations, Alice and Bob want to securely compute MOLA over ZF2. So our construction basically is a composition of two steps. So we take the inner product correlations of a lag field with the bit leakage from the circuit set, and you get one OLA over the field F. And from one OLA over the field F, we get M copies of OLA over ZF2. So note that the first step is a natural generalization of the ZIMS 15 protocol over IP over ZF2 to IP over lag fields. I won't go over the detail of the protocol. If anyone interested in the protocol, please see our paper. And in the second step, the main idea is that we embed M copies of OLE over ZF2 into one OLE over field F, where F is a lag field of characteristic two. Okay. And this is one of our main technical contributions. And I want to emphasize that before this, we knew how to get multiple copies of OLE over ZF2 from multiple copies of OLE over a big field. But we don't know how to do that from one OLE over a big field. And the efficiencies of the embedding depends on the value of M. And the larger value of M, the better processing rate. And also, this embedding relies on finding solutions to the tricolor sum free set problem. And the tricolor sum free set problem also have applications in matrix multiplications. And now next, let me state the tricolor sum free set problem. We want to find two order sets, S and T, each had M non-negative elements. So that the only solutions to the equation SI plus TI equal to SA plus TK is achievable solutions. In other words, I equal to Z equal to K. And we want to maximize the size of S and T. So this problem is a generalization of the well-known three-free set problem. And under the constraint SI equal to, equal to TI, this problem is identical to the three-free set problem. And using existing explicit construction of the three-free set, we achieve M equal to anticipate one minus small one. And in an ongoing work, we saw that M equal to theta M is impossible. And I want to emphasize that using the solutions to this problem, we can get an embedding. But I won't go over the detail of the embedding. If, if anyone interested in, you can find it in our paper. And for the rest of the talk, I will talk about the other side, about building maximum liquid resilience. So the question is that which techniques can be used to help about the maximum liquid resilience of any correlation? An existing approach is a partition argument, but this approach has a bottleneck. It applies only to multiple independent samples of small correlations. For instance, we can use a partition argument to show that the correlation RT to the power of n by 2 is resilient to at most n by 4 bits of leakage. However, this technique does not extend to secret sets with a sample from globally correlated correlations. For example, the inner product correlations. So to overcome the bottleneck, we introduce a new measure, namely the simple partition number. 
But first, let me introduce uh, the notion of symbol gap. A symbol gap, a bipartite gap, such that each of its connected components is a backlit. And a backlit is a complete bipartite graph. And the symbol partition number of a bipartite graph is the minimum number of symbol graphs that needed to partition it exists. For example, this graph is, a, is not a symbol graph, but it can be decomposed into two symbol graphs like this. The same, uh, the same color act means the same connected component. So why do we care about the graph? Correlations can be alternatively represented as graphs. And a correlation is a weighted by the graph, G, where the left matrix set, L, is a set of all possible by sets, I, R, B for at least. And the right matrix set, R, is a set of all possible by sets, I, B for both. And the weight of the edge, I, R, B, is the probability of getting I, R, B from the correlations. And in, a, in our paper and in this talk, we just consider the correlations in which the weight are the same. Okay. So, for example, this graph represents the inner product correlations over ZF2, Z2. You can see that 0, 0 is connected to every node on the right because 0, 0 is orthogonal to every vector on the right. And 0, 1 is connected to 0, 0, 1, 0, but not 0, 1, and 1, 1. Now, let me show the connection between maximum liquid resilience and simple partition number. So suppose a graph G is a correlation, and suppose there exist lambda symbol graphs that partition, that partition the axis of the graph G. Then, C is not resilience to log lambda based of leakage. So intuitively, this lemma says that an upper bound on the symbol partition number implies an upper bound on the maximum liquid resilience. And finally, let, let me just give the estimation of symbol partition number for the two correlations we have seen earlier. For the cor correlations ROT, with secret sets of size n, the symbol partition number is 2 to n by 4. It means that the maximum fractional liquid resilience is 1 fourth. And note that our technique subsumes the partition argument. And for the inner product correlations with secret sets of size s, the simple partition numbers is psi of f to the power n by 2. So it means the maximum fractional liquid resilience is at most half. So in summary, we mentioned two contributions. The first contribution is that there exists a correlation that generates n bit secret size. It produces n to the power 1 minus small o1, CQ independent of this. And it is resilient to n by 2 bits of leakage. And the second contribution is that we introduce a graph theoretic measure, the symbol partition number, and it can be used to up about the liquid resilience of correlations. And thank you for the listening.